Welcome back guys to another episode in our series about making money with smalls or the power of selling smalls. I hope that you all have been busy making things since our last video. I know that I have, and I've also found several items that I think will be a huge hit for this upcoming holiday season, like this. These awesome decorative trees, they have limbs that spin so you can adjust for different types of books. And the best part of it all, you guessed it, you can build this large tree out of one fence picket. And this large tree is just one of the items that I'm going to be teaching you step by step how to build in this episode. So let's get to it because we have a lot to cover. And since we are getting closer to the holiday season in this video, I'm going to be mixing in some holiday builds. The awesome thing about holiday and Christmas items is they fall into one of those categories that people will spend extra money on. But the Christmas season is my favorite out of all of them when it comes to making money with woodworking because people are ready to spend. So let's go ahead and hop into this first one because I think that it's going to be one of those that's going to help capture some of that money that people are ready to drop. And that is going to be this spiral Christmas tree. So last year I taught you guys how to make the different spiral trees and they were a hit. Make sure to check that out because people have sold those all year long. And what I noticed in my research is that spiral types of trees like this one are super hot this year. They're on all the big box stores websites and in all kinds of different styles. So let's start with this one that is made out of dowel rods. Okay, so this is actually a really cool idea. Let's break it down. I'm just gonna call these dowel rod trees, but they come in three different sizes and this set of three is 163 bucks. This thing would be super simple to build. So the dimensions for the three different sizes, we have the small one, which is nine inches wide by 18 inches tall. We have the medium, which is 12 inches wide by 22 inches tall. And then the largest one is 15 inches wide by 27 inches tall. So I'm just gonna break down this small one because they are all built the same, with the exception of how many limbs that they actually have. The small has nine, the medium has 12, and the large one has 15. And then the only other difference is going to be the length of our starting dial, which is going to be the bottom one. Okay, so for all three sizes, that's all that they have used for the limbs for these trees are three quarters of an inch dowel rods. The little wooden balls that are in between, don't even try to make those. Just order those from Amazon. They'll come pre-drilled with a hole in the center for dirt cheap. The only thing that I would do to change up these wooden balls would be to widen the hole that it comes with. I think most of these come with a quarter of an inch hole. I would go ahead and widen that out to three eighths. Why 3 8 Because a 3 8 dowel rod is what I would use to run through the center of all of this. You could test this out with a quarter of an inch dowel rod, but to me it may be a bit flimsy. Or if you did not want to use a dowel rod, you could use a piece of quarter inch thread stock. It'll be a lot more sturdy, but it'll cost you a little bit more. Okay, so all that they have done to get the shape of the tree is start with the longest one. So for the small one, it's going to be nine inches long. And then for every limb level up, you are going to subtract an inch and an eighth. And then you'll just keep repeating this all the way until you get to the very top. And that's going to give you your perfect little Christmas tree look. Wooden balls that they're putting in between, that's what's going to allow them to actually spin if you want the twisted look. Or you can keep them straight and they look great like that as well. They have put a little metal decorative star at the top. Again, you can pick those up off of Amazon. For the base of this, they've taken a piece of wood and cut it into a round, and they put a thicker spacer on top of that. I don't think that that's needed, but if you like that look, then you would just go up to a larger dowel size, or you can get the wooden closet rods. It looks like it'd be about the same size as that. If you wanted to make this round base, that's all that you would need to do is take something that is an inch and a half thick, draw the size of the circle that you would like on that, and you can cut that out with a jigsaw, they have this round over look. You can do that with a router or you can actually do that with a palm sander. The little half balls that they're using for decoration around the edges, you can pick those up on Amazon as well. I think that they're like 300 pieces for 10 bucks. But the reason why that they have done all of this, the round base, the half rounds around the bottom is to keep that round smooth look for this whole piece. There isn't any sharp edges or anything like that. Another neat alternative to what they're using as a base would just be an in cut off of a log. You know, the firewood stuff that I make fun of all the time. It actually come in really neat here and kind of match this design. Then as far as putting all of this together, you would need to draw holes in your dowel rods. So I would just line them all up into your tree shape, mark a line down the very center, and then draw a hole through that, the same size of the rod that you're gonna be using to support all of this. Once you have holes in your dowels, I would just put your support rod into your base and then start stacking all of this stuff on. And then the only other thing that they've done to top this off is the very ends of each one of these dowels, they're painted white. So you can either dip it down in some white paint or you can bundle it all together and spray paint the end white. Either way, it gives it a pretty cool look. And this is a build that pretty much anyone can do and not have any issues at all selling these things. Okay, so this next one is from the old PB and they are at it again with this super simple design and they are calling it a footed tray. Okay, it's a footed tray. Now it's a board with two more boards underneath. 
let's get creative. If you decide to make something like this, which I think that you should, because it is super simple design, sometimes simple is easier, but not when it comes to the name and marketing an item. But they just wanted to get the word tray in this item because trays are hot right now. That way that it would pop up on search engines and things like that when somebody types in wooden tray. But basically this is more like a riser. So this would go like on the middle of a table or on a counter or things like that. Yes, you could put things on it and actually use it as a tray and carry it to the table. Most of the time people are just going to use this to create height or dimension. And the cool thing is, is that you could build these to use indoor or outdoor. But this tray is two and a quarter inches thick. That's including the leg strips. It is nine inches wide by 14 inches is long and they are wanting $70 for this thing. To me, it looks like an end cut with a couple pieces of square stock glued to the bottom of it. But the simplicity of this design is what makes it neat. So this would be the perfect thing to make if you have all of those end cuts laying around. If you're anything like me, and I know that you are whenever it comes to throwing away things, we're not throwing away end cuts, okay? We can use it for something. This is that something if it's nine inches wide, okay? It doesn't have to be 14 inches long. You still put these two bottom strips on and sell that piece of scrap. If you do not have any wider scrap, you can glue this up. And regardless of whether it's a single piece or a glue piece, that's all that you would do. Sand this thing down, clean it up really nice. So based on the dimensions of the whole piece, the legs themselves are one and a quarter by one and a quarter. They don't have to be that size. They can be one by one or three quarter by three quarter, whatever works for you. But all that they have done is cut two dados in the bottom of this board. And it looks like they put those two or three inches from each end. And again, like we've talked about before, if you do not have a dado stack, you can easily do this on a table saw or with your miter saw if you have a depth stop. If you're doing it on the table saw, raise your blade up to one quarter of an inch, make that cut, then move the fence over the thickness of your blade, make that cut, and repeat this until you have a notch cut out that is the width of your legs. And for the leg stock itself, it is the same thickness as the tray. And most likely they have just trimmed these off the edges of the exact same board just to keep things easy. And then to attach these into the notch, that's all that they have used as wood glue. For me, I put the tray upside down, put some wood glue in there, pre-drill counterbore, and then drop a couple screws in just for some extra strength. Regardless of what you decide to do or how to build this, this is super easy and they will sell. And if you're still with me at this point and you think that I have earned it, make sure to hit my logo in the bottom right hand corner to subscribe. Okay, so mark my words, this next one is going to be a hit. Why? Because it's super cool, it's in right now, and it looks complicated. This thing is not complicated to make. And once you have your templates, it would be a piece of pie to mass produce these things. And besides being super cool and its sales potential, I figured out how to make one of these that is three foot tall using one fence picket and a piece of dowel rod. So your total cost to make one of these is gonna be a few bucks. They are charging $80 for the small one, 100 for the medium size and brace yourself, $250 for the large one. Okay, so this large one is four foot tall. The one that I'm about to teach you how to build, that's all that you would have to do to make these different sizes is to change the lengths of your limbs. And this is the one that I came up with. I have less than $5 in material in this thing. I think it's pretty sweet and it even spins. Okay, so let me tell you how I made this and don't start freaking out whenever you see the curves and things like that for these limbs. But that is what makes this unique. And that is what's going to keep people from trying to make these to sell. Just these curves. That's enough to keep people away and keep your competition down. And like I said at the beginning, I'm about to teach you step by step on how to make this large adjustable limb tree. But like always, if you are a plans in the hand type of person or you're simply not comfortable freehanding these limbs, then head over to my Etsy shop. I'll have plans there for all three sizes that include the templates for each one of these limbs. I'll make sure to throw the link for that in the description. So I started off with a six foot fence picket and this 3 8 dowel rod. The first thing that I did was make my base. And that's all that I did was cut two boards off the square end of the picket. One of those is 12 inches long, the other one is eight inches long. Fasten those two boards together using some wood glue and some brad nails from the bottom. And in the very center, I drilled a 3 8 hole to hold my dowel rod. I then cut my dowel rod to 34 inches long and then installed it into the base. Once that was dry, I went ahead and just painted it black. You can paint it whatever color that you like or you can leave it natural. All right, so now let's talk about these limbs, okay? Yes, they look complicated, to make, but they are not at all. So one thing to notice before I show you how I did it is that the bottom five limbs are all shaped the same. And then the top six, as they get smaller in length, they're all shaped the same. So this is a bottom limb and you see how it kind of curves up, but it also has the curve in the bottom. As you get to the top limbs, you'll notice that the curve in the bottom is no longer there. All right, to start designing these limbs, this is how I set it out. You'll need a big piece of paper or a piece of cardboard. I knew that my bottom limb was 20 inches wide, so I drew a 20 inch line here. Then the main section of the tree was 28 inches tall. So I drew a line in the center that is 28 inches long. 
And then the very last name is four and a quarter inches long. So I marked that up at the top. That's all that I had to do was connect the outside edges and it made my Christmas tree shape. I knew that there would be one inch between each limb. So that's where you see these little squigglies here. That's one inch markings. And then for the actual limb spacing, I started with two and a quarter inch spacing and gradually worked that spacing down to one inch at the very top. So by having it laid out like this, I knew exactly how much room that I had for each limb and how long that they needed to be. And I know that you're probably wondering about the curve. So I know for the second one, I want kind of a little flat spot here on the top and I want my tip to arch up. So I'm gonna kind of match what I did for the first one. And then the bottom of my arch, I'm going to have it to come up to about here. And this does not have to be perfect at all. Then I'll just put a screw in at each one of those points. Now that's all you need is a piece of flexible scrap wood. And this is a super easy way to create arches. And for the bottom, I want it to arch down. And then you could do the same thing all the way up, just on one side. Fold this piece of paper or your cardboard in half at your center line, and then cut that out, and it will mirror this shape. And making your templates is as simple as that. And they do not have to look just like these. The most important thing is their length. And that's why you need to draw out that tree shape. You want these to actually look like a tree whenever you put them together. So once I had those limb templates done, I just laid those out on my fence pick and traced them. And then the little star at the top, I just drew that out onto my fence picket as well. And then once I had all of my parts onto my picket, I just used a jigsaw. I put a scroll blade in it. I've showed you those before. And then I cut out all of these pieces using a jigsaw. Yes, if you have a bandsaw, it will go faster. And if you want to make multiple of these, you could stack several fence pickets on top of each other and cut several parts out at once. But I chose to use a jigsaw just to prove a point that there's no excuses on making something like this. So with all the parts cut, I lined them all up drew a line down the center, and then drilled a 3 8 hole in the center of each one. As far as the spacing goes, I put all of my pieces on, and from the back, pre-drilled a little hole, measured one inch between each limb, and installed a brass tack. This will allow it to slide up and be able to twist. And it is as simple as that. One fence picket, this thing is awesome. I don't know how much that I could sell it for. I know that something very, very similar to this, they're trying to get $250 for. So definitely build these, test your area because I guarantee it, these things will sell. You will have a waiting list. So what made me stop scrolling on this next one was the price tag. First I saw the price tag and then I saw the piece and it's actually pretty cool, but I don't think that it's quite $4,500 cool. Yes, $4,500 for this piece of wall art. Now don't get me wrong, this thing is huge and heavy, but it's still a lot of money. This piece of art is 55 inches by 102 inches. So I'm not gonna say make something like this. Don't make something this big. Now you can, if you had the place to store or display it. But for me, I would scale it down to like a four foot by four foot. So what makes this piece interesting is that it's essentially old cutoffs or pieces of wood made to look old, put together using different sizes until it filled all the empty space. It's pretty cool. And it'd be perfect for that big pile of ink cuts that you have over in the corner but it does not have to look just like this. But I just use this as an example. So that's all that they've done is use two by fours to make a frame. Then they painted a piece of plywood black and attached it to the back. And then that gave them the area that they needed to fill up. Looks like that there's a lot of mortise and notch holes in a lot of these parts. You could recreate that if you wanted and just stain the inside of it dark because it's on a dark board. And once they had all of their parts into places where everything kind of legoed into place, they just glued everything down. And then I'll assume that they fastened it down some way from the back. So simple as that. Again, I'm not telling you to build one just like this, but something similar to this, something that's abstract, has different dimensions, makes for an interesting piece of wall art where no two will be the same. And again, that's something else that people will spend money on. Something that's unique and one of a kind. Just an idea. Okay, so this last one, this one's going to be awesome. The OPB has done it again and impressed me, blew my socks off with this. It's a bunch of sticks tied together with a piece of rope to make it look kind of like a Christmas tree. And they're wanting $42 for those sticks that you raked up and threw in the fire pit. I guess they got tired of messing with, you know, heavy firewood and just decided to use the limbs. I don't know, but they're selling these things. I actually have to read this because the title for this is so long. So they're calling this a natural brown frosted wood tree with star hanging Christmas decoration. It has nothing to do with the sticks tied with string but that's the name of it. But this is actually pretty neat and another lesson in marketing because they are marketing this as abstract. 
So with it being marketed as an abstract item, it's not meant to be perfect. You're supposed to look past what it's made out of and actually see what it represents. It won't hurt to make one of these because you can pick up some sticks out of the yard and get some grass string and throw one of these babies together. Again, like the dowels, the only thing that you would have to do is kind of lay out that design. You tie your string as you go, or you could drill a hole through each level, run that in, tie a knot. The hardest thing about this whole limb tree would be the little star, and that's all that they've done is take even smaller pieces of a branch broke it into equal length sections, hot glued it into a star, and maybe put some tacks around it. But anyway, I'm just showing you this because some people will love it. And again, that's what we do. We don't always make things that we like. We make things that someone would like. Plus, it's a good way to get rid of the branches in your yard. And if you have a lot of pine cones in your yard, check out the archives from one of last year's video where the OPB was selling pine cones on a stick. Who remembers that one? Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I hope that you were able to take something away from this video. Whatever items that you decide to make for this holiday season, it's time to start building those because we live in an instant gratification world and you cannot tell them that you will get their Christmas item to them in February. So no more procrastination, no more excuses. If you have always wanted to get into woodworking but just have not taken that plunge yet, it is time. I challenge you to pick one of these items. I don't care if it's the stick tree that we just got done talking about. Get up. Go outside, take a pile of nothing, and make something. Till next time, guys, we'll see you.